good morning you guys it is monday january 28th i think um i am dressed pretty casually as you can tell because it is actually a professional development day uh, for our district so we don't have any students it, this is called our data day which basically we're sitting down and we're looking at data and then we typically get some time later in the day to plan meet with our team um, so that is what today is all about um, as far as my weekend guys I actually feel like I'm sick again I don't know if you watch my vlog on Friday at the very or if you watched my vlog last week when I was recording in my bedroom on Friday my nose just kept running and I couldn't get it to stop I felt fine but I just thought I had a runny nose and then I worked out on Saturday and then after my workout on Saturday I was walking around Target buying groceries and I just started to feel like extremely cold and run down and tired and from that point on I have not felt well I feel better today than I did on Saturday but I still still feel very uh, congested in my head I canceled Orange Theory this morning I didn't go um, so in the hopes of getting better instead of coffee I have made this tea from Target I think it's called like a wellness tea um, I really wanted to get a medicine ball tea from Starbucks but I don't know about the Starbucks by you guys but they never have all the ingredients to make the tea even though they know it is like one of their more popular drinks especially during this time of year and it just baffles me as to why they don't properly stock what they need to make that tea because I would have really liked to have had one. So that is the day. Um, I wanted to share this sweatshirt with you guys. I got this from Target not too long ago. It's very comfortable. It says coffee, dogs, and sweatpants. And I have bought a few sweatshirts and like loungewear items from Target lately. And they've all just been really comfortable and really soft on the inside and this is one of those things. So at least with me not feeling 100% and sitting down a good portion of the day just listening to data and quite possibly hearing things that I should be doing better because that's how you often feel when you're going to these professional developments. At least I get to be comfortable in the process. Um, I am hoping for another good week this week. Last week, like I said, was just it was just good. It was productive. I felt like I got things done. I didn't get everything done, but when Friday came, I was happy with what I had accomplished. So, um, but yeah, that's it. I don't really have anything else to share or report because I didn't do anything all weekend except for work out, realize that I was probably still sick, and then spent a huge chunk of my time on the couch. I haven't even picked out my outfits for the week, which is not um, the end of the world but for someone like me who tends to be very type A in ways like yesterday I was just so stressed by the idea that my Sunday was not going the way it normally should go like I'm supposed to wake up work out pick up some groceries listen to a, a church service pull my clothes for the week um, get them ironed and all of that and I didn't do any of that and I went to bed feeling a little anxious about it but I also had to tell myself um, you don't feel well, so you need to sit yourself down somewhere because you are probably sick again now because you didn't properly take care of yourself when you were sick about a week or so ago. <coughs> so, anywho, that is where I'm at at 7.50 on a Monday morning. I don't know how much checking in I will do today because I will be in the process of in having this meeting and then at two o'clock, I have a phone interview with a, um, it's like a, I don't know how to describe it. They're a company that's following up with all the school sites that participated in our cultural proficiency training, just to kind of get a gauge of what teachers um, response to the training was, how we feel it went and things like that. So I have to do that at two o'clock. And then hopefully after that, I'll be going home relatively soon. Cause I hopefully can cook and do all the things that I was supposed to do yesterday, today. So, um, that's it. Uh, also, I feel like there's a few new people here watching, and I know I've said it before. Um, I think I've said it before, but I wanna say welcome to my channel if you are new. I am very happy to have you here. Um, I've also picked up over the past month a few new Instagram followers, so if you're new to my YouTube channel on Instagram, 
welcome. Um, my channel and my Instagram account uh, is just my life teaching with a little bit of other things sprinkled in. So I hope that you guys enjoy it. And anytime I feel like I have something useful to share or fun to share, I try and do that with you guys. But um, I just want to say hello. Thank you for following me or subscribing to my channel. And um, I hope that you guys have a great day, whatever day it may be for you guys. I will talk to you soon. Good afternoon, you guys. It is tw not 12 yet, 11.57. I am at lunch. Um, I just got back to my classroom and made an emergency manicure appointment because um, look at this craziness. So um, I'm not flipping you guys off, but this one happened last night like I literally looked down and half the nail polish was missing um, and then some other ones are chipped I'm not upset though because my nails I got my nails done about two and a half weeks ago so it's it's time my intention was to go this Saturday because it's the weekend I have more free time but I just can't I literally can't stop looking at my hands and just feeling subpar because my nails are so jacked up so I just made an appointment I am going at six it's a little crazy because I will be kind of driving during rush hour time my hope is that I'll be going opposite of traffic so it won't be too bad um, and I'll feel better afterwards so I have a feeling if you guys don't mind because I just love a good fresh manicure that on my Instagram account that you guys will be seeing a lot more manicure shots because I am currently still obsessed with going to this particular place because they just seem to have a lot of creativity available. So um, that's that and then I am having Panera for lunch because one of the moms of uh, one of my students was nice enough to bring me some soup for lunch because she can hear she sees me every morning because she sticks around with her child um, until I get the kids in the classroom. And so she always walks with our line to the door and she could hear when I was talking to her that I was still, that I was congested. And so she was like, are you sick again? And I said, yeah, I really think I just wasn't healed from the last time. Um, so we were just kind of talking about that. And then she just dropped off some soup for me to have for lunch and sent me a note saying she hopes that I get better, which I really appreciate. It's moments like that where all the hard work is worth it. So just to know that people are thinking about you. So I'm gonna have my chicken noodle soup is what it looks like it is and my bread. I'm gonna watch a little um, YouTube probably while I eat it. I did read my devotional today. I mean, this was one of those devotionals that it's true but it's hard to follow. I can't find it right now. But it was basically talking about not being a, a workplace gossip. Um, but I know we've all been guilty of it, so I gotta work, remember to work on not being a gossip. As far as the day is concerned, um, we're not doing too bad so far. Let's take a look at what I have on my agenda. Um, my intentions for the day was, let's see, for morning work to have them do the number of the day. We did that. They did I Ready reading. I met with some guided reading groups while they worked on their wonders to-do list or had some AR time. I did pull small groups for wonders. We did go to recess, obviously. I did read them that book. They really enjoyed it. Um, and if you don't know what that is, this book has really nothing to do with anything. It's just a book that I remember hearing in the library and I just thought it was cute. So I ended up buying it. Um, but there is a message and what was nice is that there was actually a simile in that book which is what we're studying for wonders and they were able to identify the simile um, when they heard it so i read that and then my intention was to review order of operations so if you look on the board we were doing that because we talked about that on friday but this ended up taking longer than i thought because there was still some confusion about order of operations especially when explaining the part where I don't know if I saw the problem like a problem like this where just teaching them that even though with order of operations you were supposed to multiply before you divide if you have an equation where they are right next to each other just teaching them that you have to go in the order that it is presented so if multiplication are right next to each other and the division actually comes first then you divide first and then multiply and same with um addition so we went through a lot more sample problems of that because we had or i had kids that were still just like confused by that including some of my higher kids and so you know when your higher functioning math kids are still looking a little uh perplexed then you need to spend a little bit more time making sure everyone's on the same page so we did that 
um, which means we have not started reviewing for our math test, which is tomorrow, which means that's gonna happen after lunch. Um, and I was hoping to have started that by now. So after lunch, my primary goal now is going to be to review for the chapter seven test tomorrow and get through science. Um, we probably won't get through writing for wonders, which is what I wanted to do, but that's not gonna happen. That's kind of a lot. So all in all, a good day. Um, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed because last night, for whatever reason, you guys, I got really emotional about Genesis and I just wanna clarify I don't know if I said this in the last vlog, but I don't think Genesis is on like her last leg or that I am at a place where I have to think about like putting her down. I think it's just um, the part of like just missing the young, healthy Genesis. Not that she's even unhealthy, but just, I don't know. I feel like I'm talking about her a lot and posting a lot about her, but it really is weighing heavy on my mind. And I think last night, um, for some reason it just really got to me. I think especially because I can't even do things like hold her and cuddle with her and do all these things that were comforting to both me and her because she's nervous that I'm gonna be wiping her nose or hurt her back because it's sore. So I think that just made me really sad and then it made me think about well, when her time comes, what am I gonna do? Um, so I went to bed crying last night. I couldn't even like work on things I wanted to work on because I was, emotional so I didn't cook dinner I didn't do work stuff I don't even think I checked in with you guys um, as far as yesterday you didn't really miss much it was just a day filled with data um, we met uh, as a grade level we had some growth which was good um, so we talked about that we graded the writing interim assessments the district gives us uh, they randomly select for four students whose we read whose writing we have to read um, that represent each of our classes and then we score them as a grade level. There were some good ones and then there were some ones that needed some work. Um, so we did that and then I had a phone appointment and then I went home and just um, did some stuff around the house and then got sad about Genesis. That's really all that you guys missed. So I'm gonna get eating and um, do some things here and I will talk to you guys later. my prep period I just did two things I just called the vet to follow up with Genesis I had to drop off a urine sample last Friday my mom was gracious enough to collect that urine sample for me and the good news is is everything came back normal so it doesn't show any sort of kidney failure or litany litany um, liver failure or any type of infection everything was normal so that's good news and that's a relief um, but I do need to fit, refill some of our prescriptions so I have to go there later. And then I just spent a few moments modifying, or I always get the terms mixed up. I always get modifying, modifications and accommodations um, mixed up. I think this would technically be considered an accommodation. If you're an RSP person or a special ed person, I apologize, apologize if I'm incorrect. But the bottom line is I have, um, three students that are officially considered RSP students, resource specialist um, students, which means they get additional help, they get the support of an aide, um, assignments may be altered to make them shorter in length, or um, uh, shorter in length, or um, a little less rigorous than what I would give like just a student that doesn't require those services. So I just spent some time doing that. Um, and for me, when I do that, I'm doing that on a math test. I like to try and make the test as close to a non-altered test as possible because for me at the end of the day, at least with my RSP kids, they're still gonna be responsible for taking the same SBAC test. So I don't wanna modify it or alter it so much that I'm stripping away like 
all the rigor to it. Um, so I just thought I would show you like an example of the things that I choose to do. So I'm gonna turn the camera around. So we are gonna be testing a chapter seven of math, which is all division. And so typically I will do things like this when I'm altering a test. So like for a student that doesn't require these accommodations, they'll just have this word problem and it's not marked in any way for them. So for my students that are getting this um, test in this format, I will just th do things like underline numbers and let them know this is the total number of postcards to remind them that this would be your dividend. Um, the seven different people would rec represent the number of equal groups. Um, they may get uh, a hint down here, for example, just reminding them that the divisor represents the total number of groups. Um, let me see something else that I did a little bit differently. Another thing I might do, like in length, instead of having them do all of these problems, 7A, B, C, D, and E, I'm only going to have them do three out of the five. Because um, a lot of times for some of these kids, just the sheer amount of work is a little bit more taxing on them. So you don't want them to not be able to perform simply because, hi, simply because they are, you can just put it on the counter over there, um, simply because they're just tired. So I just cut some of the problems there and here I just kind of adjusted this number line so they can see the number of jumps the size of jumps and then just related that to what they would fill in at the bottom so for the whole test I don't alter excuse me I don't alter every single problem I just alter the ones that I think might be a little bit more challenging and maybe unnecessarily so because at the end of the day you want them to be able to show they understand the strategies and the math but you also don't want them to be just taxed by the end of um, the test. So I try and mix it and give them some that are a little bit more rigorous and then try and lighten the load with some other problems that are maybe repetitive or the same type of problem that I've already had them do. So that is what I just did in my prep period. I still have about 30 minutes. So I need to go make copies of this. Um, and then I'm gonna come back, maybe enter some grades. My kids are gonna have to stand up not PE, but recess today because we are missing a mouse in class and this happens quite often and I'm kind of just at my wits end with it because I bought these handy dandy bins right here and I promise you at the end of every round of dealing with our Chromebooks, I tell them to put your mouse in the bin and there are some kids that just refuse to listen to those directions and they just stick their mouse any old place and then they turn up missing. So I don't know exactly who lost theirs because they're not numbered. Um, so as a class, we're gonna be spending some recess time looking all over this classroom for their missing mouse. Um, if we don't find it today, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna probably email the office and see what we need to do, but I have no idea where it is and I just kind of need them to learn that they need to keep track of their things. So that's what I've been up to. Um, I'm sorry I didn't close up the vlog yesterday. I went and got my nails done. This is the new and improved manicure. Um, I was living on the wild side because I don't normally do things like that on a, on a school night, but yesterday was an emergency. So I went out there, Liza joined me, it was fun. I meant to vlog with her, but we just didn't get a chance to. Then we stopped for some dinner afterwards and I came home did some stuff around the house and then I went to bed. So that is it. I will be talking to you guys later because my battery is about to die. Good evening, you guys. I am in my kitchen finishing up a Blue Apron meal. Um, this, so let me turn you guys around. Hold on there. There we go. This is what I made tonight, spicy chicken thighs with mashed potatoes and garlic sauteed kale. So the chicken is finishing there. I am mashing up the potatoes right now and the kale is staying warm in the microwave. So I thought I would check in to end it for the day. Um, today in class, all we got to was correcting our math homework from last night, which was the review test and they took the test. That is all we accomplished. We were supposed to at least get to science or writing and in an ideal world, we would have gotten to both, but we didn't. Um, so that happened. We never found the missing mouse, so we're short of mouse. And that is pretty much it. So I wanted to check in 
close it out. I can't really talk too much because the battery is going to die any second now. I did want to give you a little shot of Genesis because I feel like she hasn't been in there in a while. She's laying down. So here she is. There's Jenny resting. I've been trying to put this warm thing on her back, but she doesn't let me keep it there. And then there's Riley laying with her. Um, the good news is, is I got, I don't know if I said this earlier, but her urine analysis that I had to send in came back normal, so we don't have any major concerns right now. But I'm going to finish cooking, and then I have to go to PetSmart to pick up her prescription, and I do need to stop by Target, and um, maybe get some schoolwork done, and watch This Is Us, because I didn't see it last night, because I was getting my nails did. So, that is my Wednesday. I will check in with you guys tomorrow. Good night. Good afternoon guys, it is 12.17. I'm at lunch, uh, I just finished not too long ago. I had a Greek salad, in case you are just curious to know what I have for lunch today. And I had some clam chowder soup because it is going to rain any minute now, so it's pretty cold here. Um, today, so far, has been pretty good. Um, we are wrapping up the longest learning block of wonders I've ever had in my life. I have lost track as to how many weeks we've been on this. Well, actually, um, we started this when, when we got back from winter break, and it is um, the end of January. So I'm going to go ahead and say three weeks. Um, this is the one where we were studying immigration and all of that. And some of it, or some of the reason why it's taken so long is because we had that interim assessment last week, and that took a big chunk of time. But we are wrapping that up today. I had them take part one of the wonders assessment. So I don't know if I've said this in a previous vlog before. I know quite a few of you use wonders and I highly, I can't even like stress this enough. Public service announcement. Um, I don't necessarily like to uh, say this out loud, but I do want to say it for the purpose of making this point. But last year, I had the highest SBAC scores in both math and language arts at my school site. For math, I put on Instagram not too long ago that I really attribute um, part of that in math to using Kagan structures for uh, math review and um, just really going through the TE in terms of our math series we use go math and just being really thorough with the kids and requiring them to show work and requiring them to articulate their answers and how they got those answers and things like that and really rarely um, skimping on anything so they get the full test I don't shorten those chapter tests um, I don't remove any problems really so I just really stick to the rigor of the curriculum and math is what I'm trying to say but as far as language arts I really do think using the weekly assessments that are designed to go with these learning blocks with wonders really helped attribute um, some of their performance in language arts so I know I know a lot of teachers that I worked with in the past and when we first got wonders as a district and I was one of them I did not give the weekly assessments and I don't even know if I gave any real assessments from wonders my first year because I was just so overwhelmed by it and I didn't know how to use it um, but last year was the year where I said you know what I'm gonna try and use this program with more like fidelity is the word that we use in my district so making sure I'm pulling small groups and using the readers and giving them the um, assessment some teachers are still um, not ready to do that because the assessments are not easy and so they'll do something like give the selection test which are just your standard you know what happened in the story test that correlate to the stories that you read with your class and wonders and those are great for I mean for me the only reason I would give that is if I'm trying to offer some easier comprehension grades but I don't give those um, at all at this point because in third grade we're past just basic recall um, and these wonders assessments are really testing your students ability to apply reading skills to reading passages so I'm saying all that to say if you are new to wonders or if you've been using wonders for a couple of years and you were like I am NOT giving those weekly assessments they're way too hard I'm not doing it no how no way I would really like beg you to consider it know that they're going to be hard um, and challenging and there's nothing wrong with telling your class these tests are meant to be challenging like letting them know you're not giving them a test that should necessarily feel easy to them and that way I feel like when I tell that to my class they know it's okay if it's taking you a while or it's okay if you feel a little perplexed by a problem um, but I really attribute their my 
class last year's performance on the SBAC test to just being very consistent with those assessments. And again, I don't know if I mentioned this before, I didn't even get through all the units and wonders. There are six units in total and I barely scratched the surface of unit three because the one thing about wonders is it somehow thinks you're gonna get through all this stuff in a matter of five days. It takes you on average two weeks, if not longer. Um, and I believe using this program, you have to be comfortable not being on a super rigid schedule um, where you can tell parents, you know, every Friday we take a test or every other Friday, I never know what day the test is gonna fall on and I'm comfortable with that. I've had to become comfortable with that. So they took part one of the wonders assessment today and when I say part one, I just have them take the first half of the, half of the test one day and then the second half the other day so as not to like just overwhelm them by the amount of reading that's required on those assessments and then the questions that need to be answered. So we got that done um, and now we're in the process of doing a practice round of writing um, to prepare them for the written portion of the wonders test that they'll be taking when we get into part two. So um, we have been working on that. We, what else did we do? Oh, um, we did a little segment of the day where I did multiplication station with some of my kids. My mom comes in on Thursdays, so kids that feel like they're ready to be test tested on a certain set of facts. My mom was testing some, I was testing some, and while we were doing that, that was the time my class had time to work on their wonders assessment or working on some assignments that they have in progress. And really, that's all that we've gotten done today. Um, which is fine because that's what my intentions were as of now. After lunch, we're going to introduce chapter eight or start chapter eight, which is the beginning of our study on fractions. And then hopefully we'll be able to finish the science lesson that we started um, last week, I think. So I wanted to just kind of check in with my day on that. But I also wanted to share with you this book that I shared with my class through Storyline Online. I know I've mentioned them in the last couple of vlogs. And I wanted to bring this one to your attention because next month, or starting tomorrow is Black History Month. And I just think it's important for teachers to know that Black History Month is also just an opportunity to make sure you're really including just read alouds that just are reflective of African American culture. So I don't necessarily feel like every book that I read or every lesson that I teach um, during Black History Month has to be historical in nature. Sometimes I just want it to be exposure. And so I found this story called The um, Hula Hooping Queen on Storyline Online and it's read by Oprah. And the other reason I wanted to share this with you is because I told my class I'm going to share another story with you by Storyline Online and it's read by Oprah and they said, who's Oprah? And I was like, <gasps> I said, who's Oprah? And so I had some kids that said that they did not know who Oprah was and then when I thought about it, I could see why they wouldn't. And then the funny thing is, and I hope no one takes offense to this, but you know, there's this joke. I think it's a common joke. I know that my family and some of my friends laugh about it where like some people think all black people look the same or that like we're one and the same. So one of my students said, I don't know who Oprah is. And she's like, well, maybe if I think about it, I'll remember. And she's like, oh, Oprah is our mayor. She's the mayor of our city. And I was like, no, Oprah's not the mayor of our city. And then I was trying to think of why she would have thought that. And then I realized or remembered the mayor of our city is another black woman and she just got her two black women mixed up. So my mom was here and I just looked at her and her and I were just laughing because it was just so cute. She's like, that's the mayor. And I was like, no, honey, Oprah. I mean, I wish Oprah was the mayor of our city, but she's not. Um, but I'm gonna show it to you. It was called Hula Hoop and Queen. And I just love these because of of the way that they're animated and the way that the story's told. So let me see if I can. Welcome to story. Fast forward it a little bit. Snap in at my feet, start. Tap in, my hips start swinging. And I'm just reaching for a hoop when mama says, girl, don't you even think about it. You know today is Miss Adeline's birthday. Then he what? 
So I just like it because it's just reflective of, um, sorry, here I am. It's just reflective of um, black culture. All the characters were black. It was just a really cute story and Oprah did a really good job of just reading it with like authenticity. Like I, I have family members that sound like that. And so I feel like it's just good for kids to be exposed to different lifestyles or different like modes of communication or the way that people sound when they're at home. So um, I would highly recommend that be a book that you share with your class for Black History Month or any for any reason for that matter. So um, that was really all I wanted to say. Um, yeah, that's it. So it's about 12, 26. I have to go get my kids in about four minutes. So I'm just going to freshen up, pick them up, and then hopefully wrap up the day getting math done and finishing that science lesson so i will talk to you guys later on good morning happy friday i am on my way to starbucks not to pick up coffee but to actually pick up a breakfast sandwich because i ran out of breakfast bowls and i thought i would vlog on the way there because a couple of you mentioned that you missed seeing um the Starbucks run of the week. So I thought I would include it. Um, also because I think today is gonna be busy. Um, it's Friday, my Fridays are always hectic just because of the nature of my schedule. But today we're adding in a whole nother thing which is going to be um, a steam lab, which is an, a classroom at our school where two teachers on our site have set up everything for each grade level. So we pretty much should just have to go in there um, and just do this activity. Like all the supplies have been prepped. Um, we have little folders that tell us what exactly the activity is. And there's little lab coats for the kids so everything should be set. So as of right now, school starts at 8.15. I will have my class from 8.15 until 9.30. And um, at the very beginning, it's National Read Aloud Day, I think. So the librarian is reading a book to the whole school. So that should take about 15 minutes and then after that, I'm probably gonna have them work on the second part of their wonders assessment. Then from 9.30 to 10.20, they have PE. Then from 10.20 to 10.35, they have recess. Then from 10.35 to 11.50, I have them for another block of time. And I'm probably gonna do writing. I don't think I'm gonna do a math lesson today. And then from 11.50 to 12.30, they have lunch. And then from 12.45 to 1.30, I have library. And then from 1.40 to 2.40, I have the STEM lab, or the STEAM lab. So as you can see, I have maybe two hours of time with my students today. So it's just gonna be a lot of me escorting them from one place to the next. Yesterday, I think the only thing I vlogged was during lunch, which just reminds me, I forgot to pack myself a recess snack, great. Um, I vlogged during lunch, and um, I didn't really get to check in afterwards, but nothing much happened. Like, we didn't get through the science lesson. Oh, I need to finish the science lesson at some point today, so we'll see how today really goes. Um, but yeah, I can't remember. Oh, I think I shared a couple books with you guys or a shared storyline online and there was something else. I'm sorry, I'm rambling right now, but I know I didn't really close out the vlog. I didn't check in after that, but nothing really um, exciting happened. So I'm heading to Starbucks to get my breakfast sandwich. It is a smoked bacon and Gouda sandwich, which is quite tasty. And then I'm just gonna head to work for a fun-filled day of me escorting my kids all over the campus. So. I will check in at some point, and so I guess I will talk to you then. Friday is normally crazy busy at Starbucks and for some reason there is no one here today. I don't know, but I'm going to enjoy it. It's the best we can do. Wait, wait, but why 
Can you explain why you don't want to cut a hole? Because this this is gonna slide through that. No, and no, it's we're gonna, gonna put like tape so it covers this. We're hole. gonna be like putting. Well, a the big question is, do you guys have enough time to test it and see no. if that happens? No. Well, you have about twenty something minutes. So instead of just saying no to each other's ideas, maybe you should see if you can test it. I see a lot of people up there, and all those people are not table captains. You gotta send your table captain to test. Okay. But the cup, I mean, is it necessary to make it wider? No, because this could fall down. It can be from this. That's the bad one. Fall, this one's the good one. Okay, it means from this, it could fall down. No, That's kind of tilting. Yeah. So That's why I said that we should. No, no, it's going to keep two of these, and then that would make it look, wait, look. It would make it look like this. And now that's stable. Yeah, but it's gonna. Uh, okay, I have an idea just to. Because if we put two, then it's gonna be a little bit unstable. Wait, I guess yeah, you're right, but. Yeah. Wait, let me. Let me know my idea. Hello, it is after school. My hair's a mess. Sorry. And uh, the day went okay. We just got back from the steam lab um, where the kids built a bridge using index cards and we tested the strength of the bridge by placing um, marbles in a cup. So let me see if I can do a better job explaining it. Basically, they had um, a set of materials. They had some scissors, a foot of tape, 10 index cards, and that's pretty much it. And they were told they were gonna have to build a bridge that could, um, that was the length, that was more than six inches in length because they were gonna be laying it on something to test it out. And then we would decide the strongest bridge based on the number of marbles that they were able to put in there. And so they had little lab coat, coats on and everything that the school provided. It was really fun for them, they enjoyed it. Um, and then at the very last 10 to 15 minutes is when we did the test for each table group. Um, table number four was the winning team. They were able to fit 42 marbles in the cup before the bridge or before the thing that we put on the bridge collapsed. I wish I could have shown you more of what it looked like, but you know, there's kids involved and so I couldn't. So we got that done. We got everything, well, let me not say that. We got uh, some other things done. They finished the second part of their wonders assessment with the exception of the writing because we have not done our practice writing yet. We are still in the middle of that. Heaven help me, we need to get through this um, learning block of wonders. Um, and then I read to them this book called Players in Pigtails. I don't have it because I let one of my um, colleagues here borrow it because she's really athletic into sports. Her room is this big sports theme. And tomorrow, February 2nd, um, is n inter, not national. National Girls and Women's Sports Day. So I read this book called Players and Pigtails, which talks about how women first got the ability or the chance to play baseball. And um, they enjoyed that. And honestly, that was really all I was able to accomplish. Um, just for the reality of life, I'm gonna show you what my desk looks like at this point in the day. So there it is, just beverages, Markers, papers thrown about, papers that are in the process of being grady, graded, my phone, things like that. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is I decided at the very last minute this morning to just create this Google presentation to get the kids ready um, for this little thing that we were doing. Um, so yeah, I just made these slides, told them that 
that basically introduced the idea that they were going to be building a bridge out of index cards. I showed them a very quick video about the different types of bridges and what makes bridges strong. Um, the next slide tells them uh, or shows them some famous bridges around the world. Then it tells them what they were going to do and then um, what was supposed to happen. We didn't have time. I'll probably show this on Monday or something. They get to hear a message from like an actual person that works in the industry so they can kind of connect what they did today to like what kind of career that could be if they really um, found this activity interesting. So that happened. Then there's this other thing that I want to share with, share with you guys today. Um, so I had one of those moments where I really had to kind of like filter very carefully how I responded to something and what I was going to say. So last not last week, but probably the week before, when we first started talking about immigration, um, some of my students asked me if I had immigrants in my family, and I think I mentioned this in a previous vlog, but I'm not sure, um, but I said, no, I don't have any immigrants in my family, and they kind of looked baffled, like they didn't believe that because obviously I'm not white, um, and we had just talked to another student in class who's, um, I don't know if she's technically African-American because I don't know if she was born here or in the country where her parents are from, but for lack of a better term, she's also black. And she had just talked about the fact that her family immigrated from the country they were from to America because they wanted more opportunities. So I think they were assuming that I would then also say that I do have immigrants in my family. So I just explained to them that I don't consider what happened in my family immigration because my ancestors, as far as I know, um, are here directly because of slavery and that I don't consider slavery immigration because slavery is not moving from one country to another by choice. That was the gist of that conversation. We didn't get too heavy into it, but I said that's why I don't consider myself having any immigrants in my family. Well, when I was out for a couple days because I was sick, apparently um, one of the students asked one of the subs if slaves were immigrants and the sub said yes and then the student said well miss robinson says that they're not um slaves so then he went on to say no slaves are in fact immigrants as well and so they told me that today and i just was like <laughs> i was just taken aback um and i said I mean, and I really had this internal conversation with myself that was very brief, like, what are you going to do with this? Are you just going to let it go? Are you going to let them know that you disagree and why? So I decided to let them know that I, I said, Miss Robinson, 100% totally disagrees with that. And then someone said, so the sub was wrong? And I said, well, he wasn't wrong because that is his opinion. That is how he feels about it. I said, but in my opinion, when people are brought from any country to another through slavery, Okay, so that was my friend who I let borrow the book. So um, I think what I was saying is the sub goes on to say, no, immigration uh, or slavery is immigration. And I decided to let the kids know I wholeheartedly disagree with that and, um, and told them the reasons why, like it's not a choice. The way slaves were treated was horrible. And I, I really said slavery of any kind, like that is not immigration. We even talked about like the book, The Encounter I had read to them um, during, uh, for Christopher Columbus Day or, and, and how that all went, or how all that happened, sorry. So just so they know, I'm not just saying slavery in relationship to black people or African Americans. And so I said, I totally disagree. And I said, and quite honestly, I'm a little offended by it. And surprisingly, like a good chunk of the kids understood what I was saying and they were in like complete agreement. They were like, I agree. Like they just were like, yeah, I don't think that's immigration either. But I just was like, I, I don't know. Like that just really struck a chord. And I was, and I was like emotional when I heard that because I was just, I mean, I was honestly offended. So I had to kind of like take a deep breath and like, let us have this important conversation about why I might think one way and a person might think another, but not do so in a way that would be offensive or too aggressive in case there were anyone, any student here that feels like slavery is immigration. Like that wasn't my point. Um, my point was not to change their mind. It was just to let them know that I disagree and this is why. But anyway, that's, that's gone with. I won't have that sub in my class if I can have any say in it from this point forward. So this is the book I was talking to you about. It's called Players and Pigtails. The kids really liked it. Um, it's really cute. It's not too long. And um, that's, that's about it. I feel like this vlog is very happenstance. I don't know how much I actually was able to capture and share, but hopefully you enjoy it. I know it's pretty early in the day. It's still 
just about 315 but I am gonna go ahead and close go ahead and close it out right now So I'm not sure how this is going to be edited because I ended the vlog like two hours ago um, Because I really thought I was going to be leaving but it is now almost 530 and now I am getting ready to leave It's okay. I tell myself every Friday I'm gonna leave early and just get out of here and just start the weekend But um, I wanted to make sure my plans were all set and they are so I spent some time lesson planning for next week and um, Getting some final details hashed out for Chinese New Year next week, which I'm really excited about I don't know if I said this in the last clip, but I have a parent that's coming in on Tuesday. She was nice enough and went out and bought some of the red money envelopes. I forget what they're called and I don't want to say it wrong right now. And some fresh crisp dollar bills out of the kindness of her own heart. And then she's going to bring in treats on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, I have a parent of one of my Chinese students who's going to come in. Um, show them how to do calligraphy, give a little quick quick presentation on Chinese New Year, and then they're going to make a little calligraphy craft. So I'm really excited about it because I think it'll be great, great for the kids. I have bought some decorations for the classroom that just arrived today, according to my mom. Um, I'm going to get some paper plates and things for the treats, and I'm going to show them a couple of videos. One I'm going to show on Monday that is of two kids that are Chinese but live in, I think, England. And they just talk about preparing for Chinese New Year. And the smart thing about me is that part of the tradition for Chinese New Year is that you clean your house like top to bottom to get ready for the new year to kind of get rid of all the bad and let in the good. So on Monday, I'm going to tie that cultural um, tradition into this classroom and we're going to clean this classroom like nobody's business and let them know that we're getting this classroom ready for Chinese New Year. So I'm going to show them that video and then on Tuesday, I'm going to show another one that's actually like produced by Panda Express, but it's a pretty good one. And um, there's a third one that the parents sent me that I don't know if I'll be showing it, but um, they'll at least see those two. So if you're interested, and I know I'm going to upload this before Chinese New Year actually begins, I'll link those videos in the description box below. I've planned out the books that I'm going to read for next week. Um, and then we're going to go forward. Like, I let my kids today know that February has a lot of things going on. Chinese New Year's being celebrated. So we're going to recognize that. Black History Month is in February. So we're going to be reading stories about um, that topic and discussing that in class. And I really want to do some kind of Black History project. I'm not sure how that's going to look just yet. Um, it's also a lot of, I want to say, like today was National Women and Girls Sports Day. But I also feel like there's something else. Um, in relation to like women's rights that happens. Oh, um, on the 15th, it's Susan B. Anthony Day. And so I read a couple books about women. I have this book about uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg that I know I read last year, so I'll probably be reading that. And um, yeah, so I'm just kind of looking forward to it. I feel like February is going to be pretty active, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how things go next week and just glad my skin right now. It's super shiny, sorry. And just glad that I can share that, share another culture with the class that I honestly am learning about myself. So now I'm getting ready to leave. I'm about to shut this computer down, log out. I might stop by Party City to get some paper plates for next week. Um, I need to get some paint brushes too, I think, for the parent that's gonna be um, doing the calligraphy activity. And then I'm going home to do something. I'm either gonna grade math tests or edit this vlog. So that's it. I'm closing it for reals now. Again, I don't know how I'm gonna edit it. So if the last clip just abruptly ended, that's because I edited out the last time I say goodbye. So this is my real goodbye. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you had a great week, whether it was teaching or doing whatever it is you do with your life. Um, if you did like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe so that I can share it with others. Follow me on Instagram if you haven't, and I will talk to you guys next week. Bye now.